For decades Republicans have railed against the size and scope of the federal government. GOP candidates regularly promise to eliminate government agencies, cut waste and fraud in spending, and get government out of decisions that, they say, should be left to states, markets and individual families. They argue for smaller, more efficient and better government.But since Donald Trump's election, that principle has turned sideways. Trump and his Republican backers now don't want smaller and better. They seem to want to sabotage the actual work of government. They appear hellbent on making it less transparent, less responsive and less effective. And this effort is accelerating.It was somewhat subtle at first, Trump Republicans started early by trying to strangle the Affordable Care Act without offering a viable alternative to replace it. Courts have repeatedly blocked these attempts, and so the administration and Republicans have worked to kill the law with a thousand cuts. They've cut the advertising budget, making it harder for people to find the plan and sign up. They removed the individual mandate, have undermined at every turn a program aimed at attracting young people to the ACA, and shortened the enrollment period for consumers to sign up. And late last month, Trump's Justice Department said it would file a legal brief with a federal appeals court to wipe out the entire law. One might argue that these are just policy differences between the parties. You can make no such argument about another series of moves. Trump publicly berated Jeff Sessions, then his attorney general, for not being loyal, and eventually fired him. He fired FBI Director James Comey for doing what the FBI does, investigate. He fired his Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, for actually practicing diplomacy and forced out his Defense Secretary, James Mattis, and National Security Advisor H. R. McMaster for the crime of providing professional advice. That's just the start. He's arguably used his office to continue to build his private business, see Trump's Washington, D. C. Hotel, and reportedly overruled his intelligence officials to give daughter Ivanka Trump and son-in-law Jared Kushner security clearances. And as long as we're on the subject of national security, he has repeatedly given more weight to the word of foreign adversaries over the professionals in the U.S. government's intelligence community. It's not just Vladimir Putin and Russia. When it came to who killed Jamal Khashoggi, the president was quick to side with and defend Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and the Saudis. What is even more startling is who the president now wants to bring in to run the government. Matt Whitaker, despite having none of the requisite qualifications to be attorney general, was nonetheless made acting attorney general violating long-standing procedure at a critical time for the Department of Justice. Appointing William Barr as Attorney General after Whitaker was no better. Remember, Barr sent the White House an unsolicited 19-page memo outlining, in effect, how the Attorney General could and should protect the President from Robert Mueller's investigation. It was one hell of an audition for Trump and secured Barr the job whose accurate description should have cited Roy Cohn the toadying counsel to Red Scare Sen. Joseph McCarthy and later mentor to Trump not the giants of justice from American history. Now we look to who is going to lead the effort to protect the homeland. Department of Homeland Secretary Kirstjen Nielsen was forced out for, among other things arguing, that the president had to follow the law and not close the border at El Paso, Texas, and objecting to restarting the administration's odious policy which she had supported, of separating immigrant children from their parents at the border, citing concerns about court challenges. Indeed, there is nothing that has reduced trust in government among many Americans than the president's erratic and outrageous policies around immigration. Last week the president told border agents to defy the law and not let migrants in, two sources told CNN. The agent supervisors told them afterward, that they had to follow the law. When the president makes this kind of move, the infrastructure that supports our democracy doesn't crack, it crumbles. 
now the president again is defying procedure and is looking to install a loyalist and immigration hardliner to run the agency created after 9-11s to fight against terrorism in America. That should warm the hearts of any group planning to attack our homeland.